Because in the past, like, I've done more spontaneous shows. So I haven't had as much time to be, like, you know, prepared and, like, focused in terms of, like, the lead up to the show. But I feel like I had it under control. And <clears throat> I feel grateful for my boys for allowing me to be able to perform um, on this first night of the tour. So she was supposed to be, like, a metaphor of, like, the white lighter, essentially. And it's, like, your muse, you know? And like when you're going through like difficult times or whatever it is like in your life, you need something that's like your muse that can like help you guide you through that energy or whatever. And no matter what it is for you or like what you think it is, it, it could be like, you know, a drug, it could be like God, it could be um, anything, you know, whatever your muse is, it's like the whole song is about like asking to like, the person like don't take my white lighter from me you know what i'm saying because the white lighter is seen as like bad luck but like I, I was trying to do like a flip on the idea yeah the whole concept is is based around that is just like being real and honest with yourself and, and realizing like okay i have a muse you know and like this is how i feel like when i'm in it it's almost like an oblivious joy even though you know like you're not supposed to be like it's like a juxtaposition in the music itself so i'm working on like an actual project it's called the forbidden flea and the concept is about like you know in life we deal with things that are like our our blockages or like our, our cages or whatever you want to call it you know like things that stop us from being the truest version of ourselves or like pursuing the things that make us who we are so it's like whether it's like your emotional state, your like physical state, spiritual, whatever, like so often we deal with things that are like blocking us from becoming who we're supposed to be, whether it's ourselves or like the world around us or like our financial, whatever. There's always like an excuse for that. So it's like, for me, I'm trying to, you know, depict mine and the things that are my blockages like through the album and then be able to like, right through it and like tell the story of like how I perceive myself being able to get through those things and taking the actions therefore to like make me a better person and like become truer like of you know who I want to be and like a truer version of that. So I met Meech through uh, Denzel, Denzel Curry. Um, we met, yeah, like a, it was like end of, like right at like end of 2020 sort of thing. Um, we met and uh, that was that was cool. Like I was just going to sessions with Denzel, helping him with the last album, the Mel Maya, See Your Future. Meech was, you know, just around and working on um, Gothic Luxury at the time. And we kind of just met in the studio and through that process and then always try to just like push past the studio and try to do more of like, you know, like building relationships, like real human interactions outside of like just being in the studio and doing like typical industry artist things. It's like, we're human first, so I always try to just, you know, build that arc and then, you know, let the music be a reflection of that and a representation of a natural relationship and like natural perspective sort of things. I feel like all art, even what we're doing right now, like, it, like I was saying, it's all perspective. And like the more perspective you have, the better your art is. So I, that's why I love traveling. That's why I love the idea of fleeing from whatever situation it is and getting out of your comfort zone. Because when you do that, like you'll find like the bliss and like so much happiness on the other side of like what you think fear is, you know? But yeah, I mean, it's just fantastic to work with because it's like just so spontaneous. It's so like off the wall, you know, it's very like sporadic, like energy in general. And I feel like that's the best way to create. Like he's by far like, one of my favorite people to be in the studio with because he doesn't really like in you know 
calling back to what I was saying before, he doesn't really like hold boundaries for himself artistically, you know? He's just, he's in this space creatively right now where he's like, I wanna do as much as I can and just like see what happens and don't like, you know, just get out of my comfort zone. Like you were saying, we did, you know, a whole working on the last album. I was helping him get out of his comfort zone which, uh, with his voice, you know, like in his standard voice and getting them to experiment with new things and just kind of like find new pockets, new sounds, new energy, new life, all of that. So I love working with him because <clears throat> he is very much himself and he stands on that. and. I, I, I love that, you know, because I try to do the same thing. Yeah, it was cool. I just like, me and my, my little brother over there, like we grew up together, like just playing video games, like always. And same kind of thing of where it's just like, when you're a kid, you're so free and like you don't have these boundaries of like, you know, societal like ideas of like how you're supposed to act, you know? And it's like, you could just be, but then like we were just like, freestyling over like whatever beats we're playing on the game and shit and just like coming up with like random songs and like just kind of being like intuitive with whatever the moment was you know and just like allowing it to carry us into like creativity so it was cool you know and that kind of like birthed the idea of like why I like to create in general you know it was just like a one step thing at a time like you know I didn't really like start actually recording music until I was like 13, 14, he gave me, my manager, he gave me this rock band mic from like, you know the game, rock band yeah, back in the day. So we used to play like a bunch, we used to just walk next door and like play the game. And then he like gave me the mic, he was like, cause I wanted to record. So I just like plugged it up into like my old like uh, desktop computer. And I was like literally holding the mic up to like this old ass speaker. And then I had like a recording program in there, but I had to like press record and I had to do it all one take. Like I couldn't like cut it, so like, the quality was terrible, whatever, but it didn't matter because I was just having fun. I didn't, that's like the best part of being like young is that you don't have to like think too much about things. You're just kind of doing it, not worried about like, oh, am I perfect, you know? Every song that I make, every musical experience I have, I try to evolve into the next thing, you know? I try to not like, like I said, put the barricade around myself and I just try to like be free spirited with my creativity. So I like to record in random places. Like I've gone to caves and like recorded in on Golden Gate Bridge or whatever, you know, like I've, I've just recorded anywhere, you know, like I'm doing this trip around the world in February. I'm recording like in all these different places in different countries around the world. And like that I feel like is a part of, that's like key to my evolution and just like, I feel like as a creative, it's like, you have to like push yourself and you have to get new perspectives. Like I was saying, it's like, if you want to evolve, if you want to see new things in any form of creativity and just being a human in general, you know, it's like perspective is everything. So I love to like experience new things. And when I do that, I feel like I'm evolving. Yeah, this is Sean K. I am with Deathless. Like, subscribe, comment, follow, whatever. They're amazing. They do their research. They ask amazing questions, and I'm grateful to be here with them, and I'm signing off, and I'm out of this bitch. Thank you. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it, dude. Thanks, brother. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it, man.